Institute. My name is Brittany, and today I'm going to be your science presenter. Woo, now, yes! Oh, thank you. <laughs> now, folks, uh, those scientists that make and set off fireworks, they have a very special name. Does anyone know what we call someone who makes and sets fireworks? Yes. <gasps> you are so close. It's pyrotech. Does anyone know the last? Bit. Pyrotech Mission. Mission, yeah, everyone's like mumbling it under their breath. Pyrotechnician. <laughs> Pyro meaning fire, technician meaning a trained uh, worker in a certain area. So today we're all going to learn what a pyrotechnician does, and you'll have a little bit of insight as to the fireworks that you're going to see tonight, celebrate the 4th of July. Now, Pyrotechnicians are closer to the action than anyone else, but they also need to stay very safe. So over here, I'd like to show you guys an example of a firework, but you know, those pyrotechnicians, they are trained, and of course they don't just call these fireworks. They actually call this an aerial display shell. All right, can you guys say that with me? An aerial, aerial display, display shell. shell. Excellent, now all that means is aerial, meaning up in the air. air. Display, <laughs> meaning something that we can see or hear. And shell, meaning that something that holds on to something else. Now here's an example of an aerial display shell. This is about your average size. It can get up to twice the size of my aerial display shell up here. The largest one that's ever been set off was 48 inches in diameter, and that was in Japan. But you know, we like to keep things nice, nice and safe here in Philly, so you'll probably see fireworks set off tonight, anywhere ranging from my guy right here to this one right here. Now, do you think that pyrotechnicians just like hold out the aerial display shell and they light it, and then they close their eyes and hope that their eyebrows don't burn off? Is that how it works? <laughs> no. No, definitely not. Number one, pyrotechnicians need all of their fingers to work. And number two, <laughs> they need to stay a safe distance away. But also, if they lit it on the ground, all those spectators miles away wouldn't really be able to see it. So we need to somehow get our aerial display shell up 300 to 1,200 feet in the air. Now, of course, once it gets 1,200 feet to the air, it's just going to fall back down, right? <laughs> Something really cool happens to it before it falls back down, but we'll get to that in just a moment. Now, uh, uh, for this demonstration, I'm going to need a volunteer. Would anyone like oh God, to help me in my crowd uh, demonstrate a lifting charge? How about this gentleman up top? Come on down. Let's give a round of applause for my volunteer. Sean, everyone say hi, Sean. Hi. Sean, say hi, everybody. Hi. All right, now, Sean, you know that pyrotechnicians, they're in dangerous areas, right? So we need to make sure that we're wearing our safety gear. So you go ahead, stand right here for me. You're going to be my safety gear model. Now, first, we have some gloves for you to wear because our pyrotechnicians are dealing with a lot of caustic chemicals, all right, dangerous chemicals that could really hurt them if they touched it or uh, got that in any areas of their skin. So we've got some nice heat proof gloves that'll keep out any caustic chemicals or any heat. Also, we have some safety goggles. There's a lot of stuff that's gonna be flying around. Oh, you can wear your glasses with this. That's how fancy these safety goggles are. <laughs> All right, there you go. We can put those safety goggles right on top for you. Then, of course, because fireworks are very noisy, they need to wear some ear protection. Now, for our lifting charge demonstration, we won't quite need this, but for our later demonstrations, we might. So there's one more very important piece of all scientist safety material, and that is the safety bow tie. So we're going to put on the safety bow tie right here. There you go. You know, if it works for Bill Nye, it'll work for me. There you go. Nice look, everybody. Woohoo! Science! Very good. Now, when our lifting charge gets set off, that's right here, it's going to throw this aerial display shell up 300 to 1,200 feet into the air. So, do you think that I have 300 to 1,200 feet above me right now? I, do, uh, I don't. You know, 
Maybe we shouldn't set off the aerial display shell, but maybe we should set off something that might look like a lifting charge in that shell. How's that sound? Good? All right. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do a classic bottle rocket demonstration, and we can pretend that this really dense, heavy ball <laughs> is the aerial display shell. Can you put both hands out for me? It's really heavy. Okay, you got to help me hold on to it. Oh, you got to there you go. Excellent. <laughs> now, inside of our lifting charge, we need some fuel. So we're going to add just a little bit of alcohol in here. All right, but we want it to evaporate, so it's going to act more like a gas. So we need to blow on it in order to have it evaporate. Excellent. <laughs> All right, now we are mostly evaporated. So now our lifting charge would be right on the ground, right here, and then we're gonna put our super really heavy, look, he's holding it with one hand, he's like showing off. Our super really heavy aerial display shell is gonna go right on top of that lifting charge. Excellent, very good. <laughs> very flammable, don't drop, there we go. All right, but as we said, we need to be a safe distance away from our aerial display shell. So here at the Franklin Institute, we have a very, technologically advanced tool to help us with that, and it is called a proximity enhancement device. Ooh. It's a stick with a candle on the end. So we are going to use this in order to help us maintain a safe distance away. Now, pyrotechnicians, they are one with the firework. We gotta get down, we gotta get close to the firework, be the firework, see the firework. Are you ready? <laughs> All right, so we're going to set off this lifting charge. We're just going to send our aerial display shell up into the air 300 to 1,200 feet, all right? So all of my spectators, you guys are in the pyrotechnician's safety circle. So beware for any flying objects that might fall down. They won't hurt you. You can just throw them to the side or bring them up to me. So here we go. Now, we are going to light our proximity enhancement device, and you are going to hold on to it, all right? We're going to put the flame right to that bottle cap, but first we need a countdown from the crowd, all right? So, crowd, if you'll help me out and give us a countdown from five, four, three, two, one. So we saw when that lifting charge was enacted, we uh, lifted that aerial display shell up really, really high. Now on the inside of the firework, what is actually happening is we would be lighting a fuse. That's this kind of coily thing at the top. And this will act as a wick, almost like a candle. Now today, pyrotechnicians can use a remote and can actually activate this from far away where the spectators are sitting. But real old school pyrotechnicians, they like to use the fuse. So let's pretend that we just lit this fuse. The flame is going to travel all the way down the fuse, around the aerial display shell, and then it's going to set off our lifting charge, which is this black strip right here. And that's what we just exploded. Now the lifting charge is going to do what, folks? It's going to? Lift it. Lift, exactly. <laughs> the lifting charge will lift, which will then light off the bursting charge. Now, if the lifting charge lifts, what does the bursting charge do? It bursts. bursts. Oh, you guys must be very skilled pyrotechnicians. Now, our bursting charge is going to set off all of this black powder. What's black powder? I am so glad you asked. <laughs> now, let me take you back to a kitchen in China 2,000 years ago. We had a chef that was working very hard. He's been cooking over a hot flame all day and he's beginning to get very tired. He's saving some meat for himself and his family. And back then, we didn't have refrigerators or anything like that. So he was using something called saltpeter in order to preserve this meat. So as he's preserving the meat, he's getting ready to go home, he's really, really tired, and he accidentally just <gasps> missed the meat. Oh my God, do you guys wanna see that again? Yes. yes. Well, so did he, so he did it <laughs> one more time. 
<laughs> Whoa! Now that was pretty cool. But he wanted to see if he could contain this explosion inside of something. So let's try that out now. All right, so we are going to light a flame inside of a container, and then we're going to take that very same, very flammable ingredient of saltpeter, and we're going to put it inside of this open container. So folks, what do we think is going to happen when I put that saltpeter inside of this closed container? Who can raise their hand and tell me? Yeah, all the way in the back, it might. <laughs> I, I couldn't hear you, the top popped off. <laughs> Is that what you were going to say? Yeah. Excellent. Very good. Now, you guys will notice that the entire device didn't blow up. It was just the top. Because the lid of our uh, device right here is the weakest part of the, um, of the canister. So let's hold on to that thought for a second, and let's go back to our aerial display shell. So in review, we lit the fuse. The fuse went all the way around the fuse. It acted or it lifted off the lifting charge, which then enacted the bursting, bursting charge, which does what? It bursts. Burst. Exactly, and that's made out of the black powder that our Chinese chef uh, discovered many, many years ago. Now, as our black powder is going to start heating up, those molecules are going to speed up and spread out. And all of these colored spheres in here, they are what pyrotechnicians like to call stars. And this is what's going to add the color to our fireworks. So these stars are actually filled with some uh, very interesting metal salts. Now we know as scientists and as pyrotechnicians that these salts, when excited and heated up, will turn different colors. So right now I'm going to lower the lights a little bit and we're going to see what some of these salts might look like when they get very excited. So we're going to use a blowtorch as our fuel here, and we are going to spray different metal salts onto it. So when I spray it, I want you guys to yell out what color you are seeing, all right? Now our first uh, metal is going to be sodium. Ooh, ooh. ooh what do we see here? A nice yeah. orange. Yellow. Yellow. Oh, excellent. Ooh. You know what? That's boring. That's the color of every fire I've ever seen. Let's see another kind of metal. This time, we are going to show you lithium. So let's see. Ooh, okay. Oh, magenta. Nice crimson, magenta. And then we combine that with our sodium. We get a nice little red <laughs> on the there. Very good. Now, I have one more metal to show you guys, but this time, you're going to tell me what it is. So think about a metal that you know of that when it hits oxygen, it gets very excited, it turns this color. Ooh, Ooh green. So what element do we know turns green when it hits oxygen? Yes. Copper. Copper, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for your points <laughs> down here. So let's see how pyrotechnicians are really a form of artists, so I really like to give it a little, give it a little one. There we go. Two and three. There we go. So that's our stars inside of our aerial display shell. Yes. Now let's go back for a second to that lid, that weakest point in our structure. Now looking around at our aerial display shell, I don't see a lid. So what do we think is going to be the weakest part of our aerial display shell. Does anyone have any idea? The shell. The shell itself, absolutely. Now this is wrapped in brown paper very, very tightly. Now the tighter that we wrap our aerial display shell, the bigger the explosion will be. As our lifting charge sets off our bursting charge, those molecules are getting really hot, they're going really fast, and they're spreading out. Now what do you think happens to that paper as all of this matter is trying to spread out. What is going to happen? It's going to burst. Burst, burst. exactly. Just like the bursting charge Damn. says it's going to do. So now for this next demonstration, I'd like to show how our brown paper is going to fall away, but I'm going to need a volunteer. Would anyone like to come and help me with my next demonstration? Uh, right here, up in the front. Come on up. Let's give our volunteer a nice round of applause. 
All right. What is your name? Anya. Anya. Everyone say hi, Anya. Hi, Anya. Hi, Anya. Anya, say hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. All right, Anya, you know that trained pyrotechnicians are always very safe, right? So we're going to need to wear all that safety gear again. So we are going to wear our super fashionable eye goggles, just in case anything comes back down. Maybe that bottle will, actually. Um, next, we also need those gloves. So come on over here. We need to get you some pyrotechnician gloves. So go ahead and put those on for me. Excellent. And this demonstration will be very loud. So you guys all brought your ear protection, right? <laughs> all right, looks like you came prepared. Tony is going to use my earmuffs because uh, she's going to need her hands for the demonstration. So we're just going to do this. <laughs> Got it? <laughs> cool. All right, no, just kidding. All right, we're going to keep this open just a little bit so that you can hear me. And then, last but not least, every pyrotechnician and scientist needs the safety bow tie. So we're going to get this on Anya. There we go. How does she look, folks? Great. So good. Excellent. All right, stand on this black mat for me. Now, we are going to blow up a balloon. Does that sound good, Anya? Okay, sure. So we've got a nice yellow balloon here. Now, Anya, what do we normally fill up balloons with? Water. Water. <laughs> we could. We could fill it up with water. We fill it up with air. Do you know what kind of gas we normally fill balloons up with? Helium, right? But you know, we're a really exciting science museum. We don't like to be boring right in the middle. So I filled this balloon with something a little more flammable. I filled this balloon up with hydrogen. Oh, no. All right, <laughs> hydrogen is what's responsible for the Hindenburg lighting a blaze mid sky and falling back to the ground. Today we're going to have a whole much more patriotic demonstration to speak about fireworks, okay? So, of course, we're going to use our proximity enhancement device the stick with the candle on it all right so you hold on to that now hydrogen is extremely flammable so when it comes in contact with our fire there's going to be a loud boom and a bright explosion so folks after our countdown is done you can cover your ears up um now pay attention to where the actual latex of the balloon goes okay are you ready Excellent. So we're going to hold this straight out like this. Hold on to the end of the proximity enhancement device. Excellent. All right, now, Anya, you are going to slowly, gently, and sweetly poke <laughs> the candle to the bottom of the balloon until it explodes, okay? All right, great. So here we go. Audience, I am going to need a countdown starting from five. Here we go. Shattered. It's Here's. on the ground, right? We see it torn apart on the ground. Now, this didn't it's burn up in the air, and the same thing's going to happen tonight at those fireworks. That paper shell is going to fall off. Some of it will burn, but most of it will fall back down. Now, was that explosion big enough for you guys? No. No, yeah, I <laughs> yes. Was that explosion loud enough for you guys? No. no. No! Right, it sounds like we need to do another explosion. Yes. So, let's see. I've got two more balloons here. Now, have you guys ever seen a fireworks show where you actually feel how loud it is and you felt it? Now, that big boom that you just felt with that hydrogen actually was moving the air molecules, and that's why you feel that pressure on your heart. So, in these balloons, I actually have a little bit of that metal salt that we were talking about, those stars. Oh, so we're going to see what metal salt I put inside of these balloons by blowing it up, okay? <laughs> we put in. So let's see if we can remember. Now, one of them we've talked about. The other one is a bonus, 
All right. So I'm going to put the down, and we're going to end the show with a bang. Yes. <laughs> finale. It's the finale, baby. The finale. All right. So we are oh letting our props be in the price. We need to be a safe distance away, even though we are pyrotechnicians. So here we go. We're going to start with the yellow balloon. But I need a countdown from five. Here we go. Five. five. Four, three, two, one. Woo! Woo! All right. What color did we see there? Red. Red. Red and a little bit of sparkle. Now that sparkle is my favorite part. It's called magnesium, and that will add the little glittery sparkle that you see in some of our favorite fireworks. Now, for our grand finale, we're going to blow up the last hydrogen balloon. So this time, I need the loudest countdown that you've ever done, starting from five, four, three, two, one. Let's relay that. Let's try that. Your countdown was fantastic. It's not you. It's me. Let's do this one more time. Here we go. Five, four. Firework, you know it's got to be sodium, and you guys are gonna yell sodium. <laughs> if you see a green firework, you know it has to be copper. Copper. So you're yell copper. And if you see a pink explosion, you know it's got to be lithium. So you're gonna yell lithium. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming. My name is Brittany. Have a great day at the Franklin Institute. Yay! Oh God, like she needs any more of those. Stop. Stop.